Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, brought to you, as always, by the GSMC Sports Network. My name is Christopher Shepard. Thank you, guys, yet again for tuning in. Today's show should be a good one. We are sticking in the realm of betting a little bit. We have some betting odds, not just for college basketball as you guys seem to like that we're going to be looking at the wooden award betting favorites we're also going to be updating the olympic betting landscape a little bit now that track and field is fully in the swing of things how have people viewed noah lyles and jakari richardson the two u.s track stars and how are the u.s men's basketball team faring and who could be the potential candidates to knock them off in a shocking upset We'll also be going over some college football player profiles and also some of the prop bets that I was talking about as we continue to get better. We focus on two AFC West teams who are kind of still in the doldrums but could make some noise. But before we get into any of that, I do want to remind you guys to like follow and subscribe to the show and the network as a whole it is greatly appreciated by all also we receive some tips and donations so if you do feel so inclined please consider leaving them at the link gsmc.cloud it is a huge support to both of me my fellow podcasters and ultimately the network as a whole without further ado let us jump right into the show staying on the screen right here I'll talk about a young man in college football, a quarterback who made a huge transition. He was formerly a Kansas State quarterback, sticking in the Big 12. Kind of more of a serviceable quarterback. Not necessarily a quote-unquote star, as we think in college football, when we talk about the quarterback market right now. But, nonetheless, he truly helped make Kansas State a blue blood program or close to it in his time in the Big 12. And now he's moving on to a new challenge at Ohio State where expectations are higher than ever as they look to win the college football playoff championship. Not just get there, but win. They have to overcome a lot of obstacles, but they do believe that this guy that I'm about to talk about is going to be that for them. And let's jump right into the fantasy player profile of Will Howard. When we talk about Big 12 quarterbacks, right, there are very few who come across as star-worthy. These guys have really gone underappreciated a little bit in that no big schools, say from the SEC or Big 10, really looked for them on the market when they were still in high school getting recruited. And so they felt disrespected and they chose to go to the Big 12, a highly competitive conference, mind you, to really grow their game. And this is what I believe happened with a guy like Will Howard. Staying at Kansas State was such a smart move for him because it allowed him to grow comfortable in the QB position without having to push himself to the high standards of a Blue Blood team. But now everything is different because this potentially is the last season in college football. He's now at that point where he was able to transfer to Ohio State and become part of a high-profile program. And so we're going to have to see how Howard fits into Ohio State's ideology, how he assumes the role of Ohio State quarterback and what that means. And so looking at his stats from Kansas State, I think that he's definitely going to be either A, serviceable, or B, someone who, because of his solid play, can be seen as a star. And so, without further ado, let's jump right into his stats from last year, especially ones in fantasy, because that could tell a lot of the story. 2,643 yards passing for Will Howard last year, 351 rushing yards, 33 total touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Let's talk about his best fantasy performances, though, because this could be pretty worrying. His best performance was against Troy, where he was 21 for 32 for 250 yards, 3 touchdowns, 1 interception. His worst performance was against Texas Tech, where he was 6 for 9, 86 yards. And so... When I think about what that means for his transition to Ohio State, yeah, it's kind of weird to talk about just two outlier games in his career, 
where, you know, he performed either better or worse against much lower competition. But it is still kind of telling of what Big 12 football was like compared to Big 10 football. You just really focused on winning the game no matter what. That's what Big 12 football is all about. By hook or by crook, you just want to get to the Big 12 championship game and potentially make the CFP. And that's the kind of football I think Will Howe is, is played. But it's now different because Big 10 football, you really have to pinpoint certain games while also taking care of your business so that you don't slip up along the way. And Ohio State has pretty much two big games that I think about on their schedule. They play Oregon, I believe at Oregon, and they play at Michigan as well. And so, for those two big games, if Will Howard doesn't show up, it's very concerning, and it can be attributed to perhaps his mentality of Big 12 focusing on more conference play and getting your wins there. But in Ohio State, you're looking at a team that has built for this point. It's not just Will Howard's will that's going to lead this team to victory. It's the players around him. And he has to realize quickly that he's not the star quarterback. He's the guy who's getting it to the star wide receivers. And so I feel like with the wide receiver weapons at his disposal, you have a Mecca Buka who certainly plays like a wide receiver one. Never truly had a 1,000-yard season, but he's inching his way ever closer. You have talented freshman Jeremiah Smith turning heads in spring practice and who should be looking for a lot of playing time. Sophomore Carnell Tate as well, also looking very exciting. So a young receiving core that's really built around, you know, getting that experience and, and you know, being able to be trusted early on in their careers really should help Will Howard settle in. But it's how he settles in that's important. And it's also the reason why I think that he might not be as popular of a fantasy college football pick in earlier rounds. Take, for example, a guy like Carson Beck, right? The reason why I'm so much higher on Carson Beck than I am on Will Howard is because Carson Beck knows how to play within the system of a pressure cooker. He knows what it's like to immediately make that transition where you weren't starting, now you are starting. This is a different transition entirely. This is wholly different for Will Howard. He's not transitioning from a bench player, a role player at a Georgia, Ohio State, or big program like that. He's transferring from Kansas State to Ohio State. And so that immediate cultural shift in how Kansas State views football and how Ohio State views football could be a shock to him. And how he handles that is highly pivotal for how this wide receiver core performs as well. And I think we'll be talking about them a lot more as this fantasy college football season goes on. And so, let's talk about this word serviceable. Because it can mean so many different things for so many different people. Is serviceable in the terms of Kansas State good enough to ignore the fact that he's playing for Kansas State? And is serviceable good enough for Ohio State to the point where Will Howard looks comfortable enough to handle all the pressure that Ohio State brings with it, and being the quarterback that Ohio State brings with it. Because remember, he's not, you know, Justin Fields who brings so many added threats to the field. He's not C.J. Stroud who does that as well. He's more in the mold of like a guy like Cardell Jones, right? who didn't necessarily have that much pressure on him, unlike Will Howard, but kind of had to immediately assume the mantle and role of uh, Ohio State quarterback and made his own. And so, I'm going to have to see how Will Howard balances between serviceability 
and the ability to be a competent Ohio State quarterback. Because if he's anything less than competent, Ohio State will not succeed. Because, like I said, games in the Big Ten are much more different than the Big 12. Because in the Big Ten, a lot less chaos or chaotic things can happen. In the Big 12, you're banking on chaos happening to get you to the point you want to get to. But in the Big Ten, you take it step by step and really amp up for the games that you're passionate about. However, Will Howard can't lose sight of the smaller teams. That's the question. Will Howard always seem to be prepared in the Big 12 for vanquishing the Giants of the programs, the Texases, the Oklahomas, because he always knew that he could bank on anything can happen mentality. It's not necessarily the case at Ohio State. They understand the pain of losing. They understand the nuances of navigating a Big Ten schedule. And so, seeing how Will Howard reacts to that is highly integral to A, how Ohio State will fare, and B, how he fares as a fantasy player. Because taking those two games in perspective, two games against opposition who aren't really, you know, high-profile programs anymore. If you take those two games and you put them in perspective of if he did that with Ohio State, he would immediately be vilified. And so, that's that's the balance that he has to find. Understanding that he still needs to keep afloat against smaller teams, but also be ready for when the time comes to amp it up. Because that's the Will Howard that Ohio State believes they've gotten. And if not, they have a very talented QB behind him. Devin Brown, Julian Cyan. They have a lot of hope in those guys as well. So if nothing goes to plan, then this project, this experiment really wasn't worth it for Ohio State, and this could prove to be a missed opportunity. However, all he needs to be, and the word that pretty much matters, in my humble opinion, to describe Will Howard is serviceable. That's all you need to do, Will. Be serviceable, and Ohio State, I guarantee you, will be challenging for that CFP championship when it's all said and done. That should just about do it for this segment. Coming next, we transition to the world of college basketball. We look at the Wooden Award betting favorites. See who's on that list of exciting prospects for that award after the break. I feel like I'm losing my mind. 